Hey guys, welcome back to the food forest. Today we're gonna do a pond update video. We haven't really done one in a while, so we'll go around and look at what's living in the pond, plants around the pond. The nice thing about this video is that I've set up a bunch of little microclimates in and around the pond, dry, rocky, sunny areas, shady woodland areas, wetland areas. So I can talk about some of the plants that are doing well in those areas. And then even if you don't have a pond per se, you can probably use this information to help flesh out your own food forest for your own little microclimates or just general overall conditions of the environment that you live in. So thanks for watching. Let's get right to it. If you love what we do here on this channel, building for nature, definitely hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you know when these videos come up and tell people about this channel. Tell people about permaculture and how we can change the world by planting more plants. If you wanna support more than that, check out that membership button next to the subscribe button Let's get into the pond video right now. So do you guys remember that frog who was singing that wonderful song in the Battle Royale video? Yeah, I think that beautiful song he was singing was pretty successful. That is a lot of tadpoles. Look at this little island guild. Comfrey, sea buckthorn, creeping jenny, a peach tree as the overstory and it's just doing fantastic i think i might chop and drop some of that comfrey though and feed it back to the soil the soil in this island guild is terrible it's just like all the other soil so i've got to rebuild it so these dynamic nutrient accumulators are fantastic for doing that job Look at this little gift that I revealed when I did that. This is fantastic. Little runners of named variety sea buckthorn. So I can dig these up and propagate these and sell them. Many, many little new runners. This is so fantastic. I might even go do that today. So although I did like the aesthetics, the look of that comfrey, really nice and tall, nice filled in guild, that comfrey will regrow in maybe a week or two to be almost as big. It's just about to flower so 
interrupting that now will actually cause the plant to create tons more leaves. Now as far as the sea buckthorn goes, this is a nitrogen fixing plant. Um, when I did my top bushes for your food forest video, this was the number one bush. So it is one of my favorite plants. It's arguably the healthiest berry on the planet. I actually have a video exclusively on it called What is the Healthiest Berry on the Planet? And spoiler alert, it's sea buckthorn. So having these pop up is wonderful because I'd started with wild varieties that I found in the wild. They have massive thorns and small berries. These ones here have large berries and almost no thorns at all. So being able to propagate and spread this variety throughout my food forest is just wonderful. And in the store, each one of these little runners dug out and put in a pot will cost you 20 bucks. So there's 60 to 80 bucks in there, maybe even $100 worth of plant material that I just happened to discover because I'm chopping and dropping my comfrey to build soil. I'll also try to give you an update of the polyculture in a pot as often as I can so you can see it um, develop. Right now everything seems pretty happy actually. So, so far so good. I think everything I've planted is still surviving. The raspberries got a little dried up from all the lack of rain lately. But everything else seems to be doing alright. Surprisingly, the good King Henry is looking like it's going to do well. I thought that thing would be dead in a week. Already this mint is starting to push push over and try to take over so that's probably an indicator of where this is going. I think people who put their money on mint are going to be pretty happy with the result. But the, the smell is fantastic. It's, it's, I can't even describe it. It's so strong. The smell of this whole pot, just everything in here is a smelly, smelly plant and it smells crazy. I suppose I should quickly mention what some of these things are for people who haven't seen that video yet, but go check it out. It's the Battle Royale video. Um, I wanted to make a permaculture polyculture in a pot. Polyculture is just not just one plant, but a symbiotic relationship of plants um, where the strength of the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. So this is um, Good King Henry. It's an edible perennial green. So this is fantastic. If you can get an edible green that's a perennial, then you never have to plant your greens again. That's really, really something everyone should be striving to do. We've got some strawberries in here, chocolate mint. Um, we have got some yarrow in here. Uh, we've got some onion chives. We've got raspberries, some more um, strawberries, and some peppermint in the back that the strawberries are kind of smothering out. Sorry, I was a little low there. And then I, I don't know if I said oregano. So we got some oregano, and then we put some mushrooms in the wood chips as well. Let's get a little more wood chips for here. So that's the polyculture in a pot update. So right at the base of this pawpaw, we spread a whole bunch of parsley and lamb's quarter seeds last year. And the lamb's quarter did fantastic. So this will grow to a very large plant. And the greens are fantastic. Very, very healthy greens as well. Another perennial green option. Lamb's quarters. One of my favorite areas on the property is this swale. So this swale, you can just see the fertility in this swale. This Bart nut is the overstory king on this swale and it's already assuming its throne position. This is just a beautiful, beautiful tree. Fantastic. And it's in the Juglans family, so it's supposed to suppress growth of stuff around it. So you tell me, is there any growth suppression around this thing? Not so much. 
but you can really see how swales are fertility and water collection sites because there's probably no other spot on my property that is just this rampant. I can come in and cut this every three or four days and it just looks like this again. And we've got an apple way down there. We've got some autumn olives, some comfrey, some sweet william. Wonderful, wonderful swale. Leaving these sumacs up to make a little, you know, arch walkway. Fantastic. So last year I installed this other swale here. And uh, this was the one in the grass to swale transformation. And the growth around this swale is fantastic as well. You know, it's just, it's really incredible looking at the difference between even, you know, just the ground cover layer. Look at this and this in a drought, right? So it's just collecting, spreading, storing, sinking that water. This is maybe not fair because I walk down there. So this is probably getting compacted. I should broad fork it or something and then re-sow some clover into it. Uh, but this is my main food forest strip, which I absolutely adore but just hopping a few feet to the left with a swale and water collection, you can really see, you can really see getting those earthworks passive systems in early can really help boost the growth of anything that you choose to plant into it. Okay, and now we're at the top of Wildflower Hill and this is just starting now. It gets a little bit more shade. These are the only hours of sunlight that this gets. So it'll be interesting to see what pops up this year. Maybe a little bit not fair for one area where I had to dig electrical for the pond pumps. So I had to disturb that and then I couldn't plant and sow into it because it needed to get inspected and I might have needed to redo it. And the inspector didn't come until late in the fall, like three months after he said he would. So I'm going to fix that this year. We'll re-sow a whole bunch of stuff. I just had a dragonfly land on my shoulder. So cool. And we'll see what comes out of Wildflower Hill this year. It'll be fun to watch. The elderberry right at the side of this waterfall is doing fantastic. It gets a little bit of splashing from the side here, which just is this perfect little passive irrigation. ostrich fern and elderberry this little river's edge hillside guild is doing really well as well this is just planted in inches not even inches half an inch of soil between these rocks so we plant some dry tolerant plants like um, lavender and yarrow and mullen and uh, lupins Lupins will dig a deep taproot if they want, if they can, but they actually are fairly tolerant of poor soils because they're a nitrogen fixer. They're a little hard to get established, but once they're established, they go bonkers, they go crazy. So this uh, is doing really well, actually. Let's go take a look at that yarrow over there. It looks fantastic. But this lavender is doing fantastic. It's loving it here. So this yarrow is just loving its little mountainside micro niche dry soil tons of sun kind of crappy soil where it can outcompete other plants quickly this is a fantastic medicinal plant um, a fantastic pollinator attractor as well so definitely consider adding yarrow into your guilds think about dry rocky full sun spots for yarrow oh this is interesting too look at this Animals are definitely using the little niches between all the rocks. So we've got some tunnels going on. So these are wild geraniums. And here's some bone set right next to the stream. It's actually planted in the pond. So its feet are actually wet and it's loving it. That's bone set. And here's the service berry setting fruit. So this is what the service berry fruit looks like. It actually doesn't get a whole lot larger than this. 
So it's just a small little berry that you kind of wild forage as you're walking by. It'll turn red and you have to keep an eye out for little pinholes in them because there are little bugs that like to get in there. So if you see that, if you see one ripening, turning red way before the others, it probably has a bug in it. So just you can pull it off and discard it. Or you can just let the bug perform its natural cycle. It's just a, a type of fly that's actually not too devastating to the plant and it's just part of a healthy ecosystem so they they do have to eat also pests do have to eat and we can't get predators if we don't have pests because predators need food so if we want to sabotage our predator populations we pull all the pests off if we want predators we have to let some pests come and a tree like serviceberry having a little pest in the uh, in the tree I'm okay with it having a little caterpillar eating some flowers or some leaves I'm okay with that because that's the choice that we have to make do we live inside a dead ecosystem or a living one and do we do all the pest control or do we let nature do some of it for us there's no other option it's binary we either kill all the pests and become the predator and have to deal with swelling um, pest populations because we just took all the food out for the predators or or we let nature do it and create a balance okay so here we are in the wetland filter and the wetland filter the pumps pump into the bottom of it and the water percolates up through like four feet of gravel and the gravel is smaller river rock style gravel so that the bacteria will colonize a higher surface area and then we plant plants in it. And this is our filter of our system. It's a natural biological filter. So we plant water loving plants in here and plants that want to spread roots everywhere. That's kind of the whole point. So we've got um, irises in here, which I know in a pond can be a big problem. In gravel, less so. And we actually want them to do what they do, which is kind of spread everywhere and send roots everywhere. So these are irises specifically in this one area because this is a great spot for their function we've got corkscrew rushes and um, we've got stuff like bloody dock that i've planted in here that's another edible plant so we can actually eat that bloody dock and might as well if we need plants to take nutrient out of the pond put the nutrient in the leaves we might as well then become the source of where that nutrient goes so that's another green edible perennial that I never have to plant I just have to eat whenever I want that's bloody dog it's great in a salad and way in the back there that's sweet flag so sweet flag is a is a marshy grass that's also an edible plant so a nice marshy grass in the back where it can climb up and get nice and tall and still get access to that Sun and then filter and clean our water so it's this biological filtration that's really important in a in a pond like a homemade pond and right in the island there we've got our elderberry that is actually planted in a hole in the rock inside the pond so the pond liner comes behind that rock and this big giant rock actually had a hole right through it just eroded away from thousands of years of sitting in I guess like a little riverbed so we actually planted a plant that likes wet conditions elderberry and we trialed out to see if it would tolerate being submerged in water this is its second year and it seems pretty happy maybe not thrilled but it's actually roughly the same size as the terrestrial plantings of the elderberry that we did so that's kind of a, a bit of an experiment and I think a successful one we'll see how that grows over the years so I think we'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. Um, let me know what you thought of this pond video if you want to see more pond um, videos in the future talking about different plants that I've put in different micro niches. I think that aspect should be useful even if someone doesn't have a pond. You know, all the rockside cliff plantings where it's sunny and dry and rocky versus wet area plantings, shade planting. Um, so hopefully someone, everyone got something out of this. 
and uh, yeah, let me know if you enjoy these videos and I'll do more of them in the future and I'll try to touch base on the pond every once in a while. This pond was designed and built by Joe Genovese. This pond was built and designed by Joe over at Genoscape. So if you're in the Markham area of Southern Ontario, that's where he's based out of. I'm not. I'm a little bit away from that and he did come uh, a decent distance to install this pond, probably because it's a large project. But give him a shout if you like this. Um, this was life-changing for me. I'm going to enjoy this for the rest of my life, absolutely. And this is now the beating heart of my food forest ecosystem. The amount of dragonflies and other uh, beneficial you know, water insects, water plants, just the diversity I can pump out because I put this in is fantastic. Best thing I ever did, definitely not cheap, but um, well worth it. I think if I'm going to spend money at all, in my life I'm gonna give it back to nature like this so thanks for watching let me know if you like this video and I'll see you guys on the next one